Good morning and welcome to this Innova Systems webinar on the Baron Calculator. This is going to be a short one guys, so uh, pay attention. Um, I'm just going to jump back into SolidWorks where we can see I've got a model of a shaft set up here. Um, really the shaft's just here so I can uh, give you a scenario to create the bearing around. If I double click on the shaft, we can see this shaft has a diameter of uh, five millimeters. So we're going to be looking to create a bearing for this uh, shaft uh, size. So um, first of all, I need to turn uh, or get to the bearing calculator. Now this can be found by turning on the toolbox. So we need to turn on the toolbox add-in. Uh, this sort of answers which version of SolidWorks you need to run the bearing calculator, and that is either SolidWorks Professional or SolidWorks Premium, as both of those have uh, the toolbox inside. So I'm going to turn that on. Uh, now that's turned on, we get an additional menu up here uh, titled Toolbox, in which you can see the bearing calculator. So I'm going to start that up. It pops up in uh, a little window on the screen. Uh, first of all, we need to decide whether we're going to be using US units or SI units. So I'm going to go into my millimeters and newtons. We then need to choose which standard we want to use. Uh, we've got ANSI inch, metric, DIN, ISO, uh, JS, and SKF. We're going to go with ISO. And then you've got to choose which uh, bearing type you're going to be using. Um, we've got an image up here at the moment. It's showing my instrument ball bearing. We can have a roller bearing. Uh, we can have the thrust ball bearing and we can have the thrust roller bearing. Um, we're going to go with an instrument ball bearing. We're going to need um, it to be an instrument bearing of some form because we've got a, obviously we've got a circular shaft with the force going or radial forces. Now underneath we've got a list of standard bearings. Um, of these digits uh, 3 and 4 give you the inner diameter and digits 5 and 6 give you the outer diameter. So I'm going to be having to select something that is uh, 05. Um, in this case, it can be either with a decimal place in front of it or not. So we've got 06 being 0.6 and 01 being 1. So if I scroll down, we can find 05. So inner bore of 5 mil, outer diameter of 8. The standard is for a number, 18, number of balls of 18 and a ball diameter of 0.9 millimeters. Um, with a calculated uh, bearing, what happens is uh, it, you pick the bore and OD basically from this list. Uh, the number of balls and ball diameter you can specify beyond that, and then it will calculate a capacity for you. You can edit the number of balls, which of course will increase the capacity, um, but I'm going to leave mine as the default value, and then solve capacity to actually get that value. You can choose to have a rated bearing, so if you are buying or if you're supplied with a bearing that doesn't appear to have a standard um, bearing code, you can then choose a rated bearing and you can put in the manufacturer's rating for the bearing in this box here. I'm going to stick with a calculated one. We then need to put in an equivalent load. Um, if this uh, shaft and, and with these uh, spur gears on it is seeing a torque value of about 350, because they're spur gears, my equivalent load comes in at about 435, so I was going to round that up to about 450 to give myself a bit of tolerance. Um, now we can see that the equivalent load here is greater than my capacity, so when I hit the solve life button and I get the error message saying the load is too big, we're not overly surprised. So I'm going to have to pick a larger bearing. So if I move up, this bearing now has a capacity of 1030, so that sounds better. Now my load value. I gave you a rough idea of how I was calculating this, but the load value has to include both radial forces, which this is going to be the majority, and thrust forces. So, because obviously that load is going to affect the lifetime of the bearing, even though it's not um, being used as a thrust bearing, any thrust load will affect the bearing life. Now I've got uh, an equivalent load and a capacity which can take that equivalent load, we can get a life in revolutions out, so it gives you an answer in million revolutions. If I don't enter a speed because I don't know what that speed is going to be or because that speed is variable and I click solve life, I get a warning saying that the speed is invalid because I haven't filled one in, but it will still give me a lifetime, in this case 12 million revolutions. If I put in a speed, so let's say 1000 RPM and then click solve life, I'll also get a life in hours. So in this case we've got 200 hours at 1000 RPM uh, and my bearing basically is now going to start falling apart. Now, how much of it's going to be falling apart is controlled partially by this reliability figure. We've got reliability L10, L5, and, and then L5 to L1. You may also know these as B10, B5 to B1. The L value is uh, more of an uh, Americanism. Um, and so what do these values mean? 
Well, L1 means that at the lifetime given, in this case 42 hours, 1% of my balls will have started to do, uh, break apart, deform, whatever it's going to be. Whereas L10, um, this is the point at which 10% uh, of the ball bearings are going to have started to fall apart. So um, you can pick your reliability depending on uh, how how reliable you need things to be, whether it's an absolute mission critical or whether it's something which can be run on a, a sort of more of a routine maintenance. Um, now in this case, we're getting 200 hours out. 200 hours isn't the greatest, so as I can move up through my different sizes of um, bearing, and we can see that because I've now calculated it once, just changing the bearing type, and it will continue to update the figures automatically. So as we come through and I get to the, the largest of the uh, five mil uh, in, or bore bearings, we're getting 4,000 hours or nearly 5,000 hours. Now that's not a great number, so you might want to come down the list a bit further. And if I come through and I pick a seven mil bore, I can get up to 14,500 hours. Now that's obviously a much greater period of time, much more realistic uh, possibly for this, uh, this load factor. So I'm going to be starting looking at um, a 7mm shaft rather than a 5mm shaft or at the minimum using a 7mm bearing and having some sort of packer on here to, to help take the forces. That's uh, really it for the bearing calculator. It's a really nice simple tool. Um, the idea behind it is just to take uh, the effort of doing the maths out for you as the designers and the engineers. Um, so you can basically plug in some standard bearings and go right okay shaft size of five ain't going to be suitable for my load that's coming in uh, 350 uh, uh, newton meters of torque um, so if I jump through and we're going to go and have a look at the PowerPoint again uh, some future webinars that are coming up we've got uh, on the 25th of April we've got toolbox create grooves and cams so that's next week some more toolbox functionality 2nd of May we've got how to use SolidWorks RX which is our reporting tool and the 9th of May is the SolidWorks customer portal, which is a really useful source of advice and, and downloads and various bits and pieces. So thank you very much for watching.